Welcome to another lesson on Lunch with the Lord. This is Pastor Mark, and I hope you're enjoying these lessons. And again, if you know someone who you think would enjoy these lessons through the Word of God, please feel free to share them uh, with, you, with your friends. All right? Um, we're going to be looking in 2 Peter, and we'll be starting in chapter 3. But before we do, our theme verse for Lunch with the Lord, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, we'll be starting verse 3, but as we remember, in Second Peter chapters 1 and 2, Peter talks a lot about false teachers. Um, the things they teach, um, how they affect the, the church. Because remember, Second Peter was written um, to warn the churches of Asia Minor against um, false teachers from within the church, against corruption from within the church. So in these two chapters, uh, the first two chapters, Peter is warning them and telling the, the churches there uh, what these false teachers are like, some of the things they teach, and also their uh, God's judgment that will come upon them, and also to remember that God will judge them. Okay, there it is coming. It, it, you don't have to worry, and uh, that maybe they're just going to keep going forever and ever and ever. No, 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 no. God's judgment, God's punishment upon these false teachers. God will end it, all right? So in 2 Peter and in chapter 3, now chapter 3, Peter talks about events during the last days. It's end times events. Peter here kind of changes the subject now a little bit, and it kind of gets off of the false teachers, and now he's starting. He wants to finish this letter but he wants to talk about um, a few other things that he wants his readers to know. So in chapter 3, it's specifically about the last days, about end times events. And this chapter can be broken down into two different parts. Uh, verses 1 through 4 is the first part. And in the last days, he's talking about that there will be people who will object to the teaching that Jesus will return to earth. And we'll see that here um, probably in next lesson. That And you, you know and I know everywhere we go, there's people who inwardly are suspicious or they mock the fact that Jesus will ever come again, okay, if he actually really does exist, okay? If, if he really is real, all right? So, Peter here is, is saying that in the last days, there are going to be people who will object, who will mock the fact that, uh, of the, the teaching that Jesus is coming back to this earth again, all right? And the second part of this chapter is verses 5 through 18, where Peter, it, it's his response to these objections that Jesus will return again, okay? So Peter is responding to their objections, and he also teaches about what will happen uh, to, the, to the heavens and to the earth, how the heavens and the earth will be burned and purged from sin and then made new, all right? And that's, that's a, a, a tremendous thing that God is going to take this heaven and this earth and and in time he will burn it and purge it free from sin and then we will come back and habitate the earth again once again in a completely perfect environment all right so in verse 1 let's read verses 1 and 2 and he says here in chapter 3 verse 1 this second epistle beloved i now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before 
by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So he says here in verse one, this second epistle, and he's, again, he's probably referring to his first epistle that he wrote, First Peter, again, written to strengthen the church during times of outward persecution. Okay, so that was his first epistle that he wrote to help and comfort them and strengthen them during persecution of the church from without of the church, from outside the church. And he says, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Now, pure here, the Greek word for pure means you're sincere. It means unmixed. It's it's a hundred percent pure. It's not mixed with any kind of sin or deception or or any any false teachings or whatever. But he says, I, I want to stir up your pure minds. I got to get this stuff going. And and it's like you know you go to uh, you go to the refrigerator and you see uh, dressing or. Uh, uh, ketchup or something, and you look at it, and it's, you know it's been sitting in there for a while. So you take it before you squirt it, because this has happened to me a lot of times. You take the ketchup and you turn it over, and the first thing that comes when if you don't shake it up, the first thing that comes out is what water. That's right, water. And you got to get through the water to get to the ketchup. So after you do that a couple of times, you learn that when you take ketchup or or dressing, or, or certain things in the refrigerator, you take them and you shake them up, and and mix them up, and and it gets everything fresh. So Peter here is saying the same thing. He says, "I'm going to stir up your mind. I want to shake you up, your pure minds, and 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 wake you up, and make you aware of this thing." He says, "I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance." You know, sometimes. Pure minds are are the kinds of minds that are easy to be led astray. Now, and this is why Peter is writing this letter. He's writing this letter because he knows that there are many, many believers that will be reading this letter, that will be hearing this letter, that are sincere before God. They love God. Maybe they're brand new Christians. And they have a pure mind. They're, it's like they're innocent before the Lord. And, but at the same time, those are usually the kinds of minds that are somewhat easy to be led astray. Okay. <clears throat> easy to be mixed with false teachings, false doctrines. Okay. And, you know, it's good for people to have a pure mind before God but always guard your heart at the same time. It's, it's, it's great to have a pure mind and we should, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be naive either at the same. You shouldn't just believe everything you hear. We need to guard our heart. And as we said before in earlier lessons, to guard your heart, the, 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 the Hebrew word for guard means like a military. You set up, you set up forces around your heart to guard it. You, you, we're not taking a, a weak, wimpy attitude towards our heart. No, we're going to guard our heart in a military fashion. We're going to inspect and 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 see everything that's coming toward our heart and investigate it. We're going to be active, not passive. We're going to be active in what we allow in our heart, okay? So even though we have a pure heart, an unmixed heart, we want that to heart to be guarded. We want it to be kept. And how do we guard our heart? What is the one thing that we use to guard our heart? <laughs> it's what? The Word of God. God, the Bible says God's Word is very pure very pure. So the one thing that we use to guard our heart is God's word. Always come back to God's word. And something comes at you, it, something comes at you towards your heart spiritually, always, 
Always compare it with the Word of God. Does it agree with the Word of God or no? That's how, that's it. You always use the Word of God to, to judge everything that's coming in. Everything you hear, whatever you see, always use God's Word. God's Word is, is, is our military around our heart that guards it. Does it agree with the Word of God? Then I let it in. If it doesn't agree with the Word of God, no, it stays out. Stays out. Right? So, we can have pure minds. It's great. But we also need to have a mind. Our, our, our hearts are guarded by the Word of God. Okay? Always go to the Word of God. Don't, just because something sounds good, don't, don't just take it by, by faith and say, well, I guess it's true because so and so said this, or I guess it's true because, well, look at that church. They got 9,000 people in it. So I guess whatever he speaks, it's all right. No. Always take it to the word of God, whatever you hear. The word of God is our standard. And that's what we live by. And that's what we use to guard our heart. All right. And he says here, uh, which I, both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Now, by way of remembrance, the whole letter, this whole letter of Second Peter is a letter written for one purpose, so that, so that they would remember, they would remember. If we go back to chapter one, verse 12, he says here, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always, what? In remembrance, in remembrance of these things, the things that Peter was teaching them. And then in verse 13, yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by what? Putting you in remembrance. I want you to remember. And then in chapter 1, verse 15, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my departure, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance, in remembrance, to remember these teachings, remember the Word of God, okay? It's very important. And, and you know, a lot of times, the, the whole, our whole life is built upon remembering. Meditating upon the Word of God, having these having these truths brought back, rehashed up in our mind. The Spirit of God moves in our heart, and we remember verses. and 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 this is this is important. It's important for us to have to have have statues or have things that that we remember of the Word of God, because it stirs us up, and and it, and it becomes a sure foundation. All right, we're going to uh, finish this verse in next lesson, but we're going to be looking a little bit in Joshua chapter 22 next lesson. All right, before we go, remember, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.